Hello and welcome to Escape in the Motorhome. My name's Daz and this is B. We're a home education, home working family who recently bought a motorhome to go on great adventures. So join us as we take the family on some wild walks, some wild and not so wild camping, explore our surroundings and try new things whilst getting to grips with living and working in our new small space. We experience the highs and lows of motorhome life. And if you enjoy our channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. There seems to be a running theme in this motorhome. And the theme is brown. Brown cushions. Brown chairs. Mostly brown cabinets. Brown walls. Brown floor. Brown kitchen. So to inject a little bit of colour, even though it's autumn, I thought sunflowers. Now sunflowers have been done before. I've seen them in other people's camper vans. There's a reason why people use them, because they're so happy. I did look at autumn leaves, but autumn leaves are generally orange, yellow, <gasps> and brown. We need to avoid brown. home is looking a little bit sunnier and brighter but I've run out of sticky fixes so I shall have to finish the other half off a little bit later on when I've ordered some more. Hello everyone, well today we're off on another little trip, just a small one but of course we've got our typical two hours getting ready just can't seem to improve on that um, but it's a day of home ed and home working just somewhere outside these four walls first off let's get the fridge chilling please please kick in it's in that's a good sign. I'll take that as a sign. At the moment, it's been raining this morning, but apparently it's going to be sunny later on. So uh, we've got a few things to see on the way and a nice little rural park up. And then we've got a nice rural Brit stop for our overnight accommodation. Excellent. We've just started on the journey and we've only been going for about two minutes and the most disgusting eggy smell is emanating around the motorhome. Now, we think it's the dogs, but I'm not so sure. Daryl says he's cleaned out the chemical toilet, but I can see no other reason why a sudden eggy smell is absolutely filling the motorhome. It stinks. It's got to be the chemical toilet. Cleaned out or not, something's gone horribly wrong. Maybe our milk has gone off. Daddy, when I saw a YouTube video van life the other day, when they pressed the button, it came out pink, like a proper pink, that's, nice that's chemical a, smell. Separate flush. All of our flush water comes from uh, underneath the boys' seats. So I can make it pink, but you won't be able to drink it. <laughs> well, something's obviously not right with your chemical balance because it's the dog. It's not the dog. Dog farts do not last this long. It's the toilet, it's and that's just, Daddy's fault. There's no ventilation in here. The dog just fart and then stink just goes around. It's absolutely disgusting. Yeah. And we're only five minutes from home. We should probably turn back. There's no way we can put up with this for 24 hours. Ugh. Can't blame these beautiful doggies. Now, unfortunately, these doggies refuse to sit down. It's not, but on... um, hang on. It's not gas, it's a gas. It's a hob on. Why would the hob be on? You didn't do it, did you? I know you want cuddles, Barney. I will give you cuddles, I promise. So we've decided to stop and turn the gas off to see if it gets any better. Because if it doesn't, we could have a gas leak and we could be potentially blowing ourselves up if we continue on this journey. If the smell continues, and that's my theory, it's the toilet. <laughs>
into Alton, which is the home of the Watercrest Line. It's a beautiful steam railway, which we've used many times before. We're not using it today though. Today, unfortunately, is a work day. Yes, we've had Barney for about two weeks now, and he is an absolutely wonderful dog. We cannot fault him. And we're gonna be really sad to see him go tomorrow to his forever home. But luckily, he's being adopted by one of my friends. What's the matter, boys? It, it smells so bad. Uh, right, let's do this litter of dog farting. Right. Let's hope that makes a difference. Right, these guys are all going to escape and give the van an air while I do some work. I can't get the dogs out. <laughs> They're just refusing. They just they want to drive. Well, we be the boys and the dogs out of the van. It's just me and my laptop and uh, an egg smell. This little firecracker is Lily. She's a Spanish Pedenco and she is an ancient breed of hunting dog and they're pretty independent and feisty and she's great fun. These two are firm friends and she's only been here for two days. The boys are back from the skate park and the door's been opened so many times to let the smell out that I've now put on my little Sherpa top and Indy has gone round the motor home <laughs> spraying aftershave everywhere. It's still utterly smells. It still utterly smells apparently. So the dogs have had a nice long runabout. They've both done their business but I did just catch Lily the Pedenko rolling in a bit of fox poo. Do we need any more smells in the motor home? I think not. Oh my gosh, there's been a murder murder right here on this slope. Nope, not frightening you at all am I? But thank you for allowing me to tell that terrible, terrible joke. Just putting my scooters or my children's scooters away and I can see that in the garage. It doesn't look very good does it? I have to ask Daz what that is. desk at the moment with the boys join their lunch. Right. I'm just having a cup of tea feeling quite stressed. I don't know why today is quite stressful, it just is. Now and again I, I forget how to drink out of it and it makes me worried for my, my well-being and sanity because I don't know whether it's the lip or what, but I start pouring it down my face. Does anybody else have trouble with a cup like this? Is it just me? So here's where we're parked up in Alton, uh, at a recreational ground. Well, I think it's a field belonging to a sports centre and their car park. I had hoped it to be a little bit less busy, but of course uh, what you don't see on Google Maps, depending on how up to date it is, is whether there's a, well, whether there's a helicopter going over and whether there's a, a large estate going in and of course the builders have got their vans and trucks in the same car park that we're in. But there is a rather cool little skate park there. Just behind us is uh, the railway line which I think heads up to Woking and beyond that the A31. But apart from the odd passing helicopter, um, it's a nice little stopover and we are 15 minutes walk away from Jane Austen's house. So we may take and the two dogs over there for a little stroll and a little bit of history. So this little spot turned out to be a little bit noisier than we first expected. What with the building site going on and a lot of diggers and trucks needing to reverse all the time with their sensors and beepers coming on. I wanted to just show you over, the, over my shoulder if I can. On this new estate I love loving these steel deer that we've got here. Cool huh?
Just before our walk, there was time just to catch up on the history of Jane Austen. When there are two dogs in the way, it's really hard to kind of navigate your way around. Um, especially if you add three kids into the equation, you'll notice that there are no children in the motorhome right now. That's because we kick them out, haven't we, dogs? We've had enough of them. Dogs or kids? Let us know which ones you prefer. I think we'll just let this guy go by first before we... Unleash the hounds. <laughs> Hello. Sorry, all those ladies said, oh, he's gone the wrong way. I went, I pointed up this path. I went up here and she went, no, round the other side. I was like, sure, because that's the leisure centre. Restricted byway. So don't trust Google. No, don't. Don't trust the locals. I've just said to the locals, unfortunately, my partner does rely heavily on his map and he won't sometimes look up around him. I'm sure Daz is going to edit that out. <coughs> so that he... I did, and I asked them again, and they told me I was up again at the wrong path. <laughs> so our motorhome is parked very close to Chalton which is where Jane Austen wrote many of her famous novels, including Pride and Prejudice and Emma. We're about to go and walk there now. Our day at Alton was very pleasant, venison quite right, children well behaved, and Mr and Mrs Digweed taking kindly to our charades and other games. We had a beautiful walk home by moonlight, and that was to her sister. Ah, not long before she died. Daz has just spotted the house that he wouldn't mind having. Got some pennies for that one, Daddy? Uh, it's not on wheels anyway, so... Oh, it's not on wheels, true. One thing we have learned, because before we bought the motorhome, we were going to move. A house in the South Downs, well, if you want anything that we'd like, you need at least two million pounds. Sadly, if you go to other national parks in different parts of England, you won't pay as much. One of the cons of being down south, the traffic noise is melting away. I feel like I'm being transported back in time to the 18th century when Jane was writing her novels. And she died when she was 41. No one knows why, whether it was connected to some of the complications she had following typhus. But imagine just being 41 and having that amazing body of work that's gonna last forever and studied around the world. I think that's fairly phenomenal imagining her walking up to this front door or perhaps writing at some of these windows. Jane Austen lived here and her admirers in the country and in America had united to erect this tablet. Such art as hers can never grow old. But they did have some pretty extensive grounds seem to wrap around the property and there's a beautiful courtyard around the side as well and what I quite like is on the other side of the road we've got a little coffee shop named Cassandra's Cup presumably after Cassandra Jane's sister. Well, outside Jane Austen's house as Bruce just said one thing I really like about Jane's choice of uh, home is the pub opposite the road. Now I wonder if that had any influence on her stories Signs of early autumn kicking in. It's definitely an autumnal air. Look at the size of these oak leaves. And one thing I always look out for as we approach winter are holly bushes with red berries and we learnt last year that there is a reason why some holly bushes don't have the red berries it's because they are the male holly bush it's only the females apparently that have the berries now we all had to look twice when we looked up at this thatch cottage uh, it looks like there is a cat scaling the roof but it's an excellent thatcher's mark and it looks very realistic I'm surprised 
that Lily the Pedenko hasn't gone for it. Staying in the South Downs, we then drove 20 miles east to North Chapel near Petworth. My favourite kind of junction, so small they can't even fit the word slow into one lane. Feeding time at the zoo. <laughs> We've just arrived at the Half Moon Pub in North Chapel in West Sussex and we are just in the South Downs National Park and we are able to stay in this Brit Stops pub car park and the pub is closed right now which is absolutely fine for us because it means I can cook and we don't have to pay out for pub food. For just five pounds we can hook up to their electricity and the boys are happy, we're happy because we can hopefully watch something on Netflix later on. I'll rip in a minute. Okay. So, one of these and a plug in the garage and hopefully we're good for the evening because I've already given him five pounds for electricity so if it doesn't work out of course I'm British so I'll be too embarrassed to go and ask for my money back and to be fair we're staying here for free so if it costs five pounds to stay here in the end even without electric it's not bad Now, I'm not admiring my beautiful reflection. It's a trapped lid inside the saucepan I need to cook rice in. Any ideas? Uh, Swiss Army knife? Yeah, okay, I'll leave you with that one. <laughs> Going so well. well. That was a disaster. I, came I was up using with this disaster to up cook on and chopping away, and it just fell onto the floor. If you can see down here, half of my ingredients are now in the um. disgusting footwell. If I could give you one piece of advice in this life, it would be this. So listen carefully. Always roast your butternut squash before you cut it. I want to call this a lazy korma because I used a jar but actually it was very labour intensive because I wanted to use up some butternut squash and then <laughs> we realised the soya chunks needed soaking, things needed parboiling, so what was supposed to be quite low maintenance has turned out to be fairly high maintenance. Still, it looks good. Yeah, you're all a big fan of the little green trees, aren't you? What's the verdict then, boys? Is it edible? It's great, thank you, Bea. <laughs> I like the way Dad's talked over the children to make sure they didn't say anything rude. I said slightly. Slightly. It's slightly good. So I mustn't get my six-year-old in because I don't want him to feel upset that I'm filming him, but he has just had a whopping great nosebleed after a great big silly game that the boys like to play with their eyes closed and flailing limbs around. So we've had a great big nosebleed and we are surrounded by um, food, debris, washing up, homemade stuff, two dogs, uh, a table full of cows and now the water has stopped working. We'll clear all this so we can actually get the water working there because we think it's a pipe connector. There's a dog in the way. It's generally more tricky to fix your water pump issues if you have a medium sized dog in the way. Whee! Hey, the water pump's working again. Well. Morning everyone! We've woken up in North Chapel!
After a quick cupper in the van, we headed home. And as the rising sun tried to find its way through the trees, we talked about where to go next. So until our next adventure, thanks for watching.